Cheers my loves, I hope that all of you are doing really well. And this is one of those videos where I'm gonna be frank with you. I'm not gonna be nice, I'm not gonna tell you what you want to hear, because at the end of the day, um, what does that serve? We already all have our ego chambers where we can tell ourselves everything that we want to hear. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about women as sexual objects, loyalty, and uh, the context of relationships. Now, this is video primarily for men, but it's also about women. I will talk a little bit more to the woman towards the end. So uh, the first thing that I think we need to acknowledge as a society is that a woman is the primary sexual object. The man is also a sexual object, but the man is not the primary sexual object. He's not a sexual object. He doesn't, uh, not to the extent to which the woman is. Even if he is an extremely attractive man, he will never be able to match her sexual value as an extremely attractive woman. Let me give you an example. If uh, a girl wants validation, if she wants admiration, if uh, in some cases, obviously not all the cases, she wants some private messages from men who are interested in her carnally, all she needs to do is post a bikini photo. She goes ahead, even if she has 100, even if she has 200 friends, she goes ahead, she posts a very attractive bikini picture, she posts it to her sexual media, and she can easily, just like that, get 10,000 eyes on it. And uh, people will send her private messages, people will give her compliments, people will give her likes, people will drool over her. If a man who is a very attractive man does the same thing, he goes ahead, he posts, I don't know, a, a picture on his social media in his speedos, do you think he will get that kind of reaction? Do you think he will get that kind of validation, admiration, interest from the ladies? No. In fact, the ladies uh, from whom, as a result of doing these actions, he gets interest are a little bit of... Uh, bottom picking a lot of the time. They're not top choices that other guys would go for. Consider other scenarios. Consider that most men these days are porn addicts. They'll tell you that they just watch porn, but in reality, they're pretty addicted to it. Most women are still not porn addicts, and most women who watch it wouldn't have gotten into it by themselves, so to speak. And uh, the thing is, men watch it for the woman. And most women who watch it also watch it for the woman. And it's not because they're not attracted to men. It's not because they don't recognize men as sexual objects. It's because the woman is and always has been the primary sexual object. And in that department, a man can't really compete with her. Consider that if a woman goes to a dating site and posts some very suggestive pictures of herself, she will get a number of guys offering their services overnight. A number of guys who are very attractive, by the way, uh, some of them anyway. And uh, can a guy do the same? Can a guy post a very suggestive picture of himself and get a number of women offering their services overnight? Most women will look at that picture and say, this is a sleazebag and walk away. They will not be excited by this person. But we live in a society that is very over-sexualized, very heavily sexualized, very... Um, into that direction very revealing and i'm not judging it by the way i'm not saying this is a bad thing or that we need to take this course of action or that course of action but within that society most of the sexual power that can be traded for admiration validation resources interest is in the hands of the woman and this is really funny because in this society we're also conditioning men to recognize that as high value. We're conditioning men to recognize female narcissism, women who are enamored with their sexuality, who are enamored with their body as high value women. We're exposing men in larger quantities than ever to female promiscuity. And we're telling them to get addicted to that, to get hooked to that, to recognize that as desirable, to recognize that as valuable. And then we're sending them out on this quest to search for a romantic partner or uh, to search for romantic partners or to search for a spouse, right? And their brains have been wired to recognize promiscuity as desirability, as popularity, as hotness, as a recognition of somebody's attractiveness. And what these men end up doing is they don't end up realizing for this very hot, very attractive woman that they choose that seems 
popular and in that moment in time that popularity is kind of a magnet is kind of a factor that pulls him to her they don't recognize how easy it is for that woman to get that kind of sexual attention for a man it costs her nothing it costs her two clicks of a button to get that kind of attention from a man and then they expect that woman in the context of the relationship with them to be a good girl to act true to them, to act loyal to them, to act committed to them. And it's such a surprise when she doesn't. If that is something that you are expecting from your woman, choose a modest woman. She doesn't have to be modest with you. She just needs to be modest with the world. But in order to be able to look at a modest woman and realize that her not flashing herself to everyone doesn't mean she's less popular, less attractive, less desirable, less passionate, and all of these other things. You have to clean yourself. You have to unhook yourself from this culture that brainwashed you into seeing promiscuity as a valuable trait. Promiscuity is not a valuable trait. And a lot of guys will uh, go out of their way and they'll say, no, 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 I, I uh, you know, I'm attracted, obviously, to promiscuous woman, come on, they're offering. But uh, when it comes to a relationship, I'm looking for somebody good, for somebody true, for somebody loyal. How are you, how can you be doing that when you have wired your brain to be attracted to one certain type of woman? Can you switch it up like that and say, no, now I'm looking for something else? No, you can't do that. You're still going to be attracted to the promiscuous woman. You're just going to be attracted to the clever promiscuous woman that is pretending to you that she is not promiscuous. Now, uh, a lot of guys are actually not okay with that. It is male nature to be possessive. It is male nature to want to mark his territory, to want to claim something for themselves, for himself. But in order to be able to recognize how to do that properly recognize how to navigate these things he must first start off by working on himself he must for example recognize that that gray mouse that he has at home the one that is taking care of his children taking care of his house bringing in half if not more than half of the paycheck putting up with all of his mood swings she wouldn't necessarily always be a gray mouse girls how many women do you know that went through a breakup and had a glow up lost 50 pounds became bombshell started going to the gyms every day got a different kind of hairstyle transformed themselves and became attractive to a ton of other men that they weren't attractive to before why did that happen because she was a good girl because that good girl was continuously being taken advantage of by somebody who expected her attention to be going to him. And because she was sending all of that attention to him, she ironically was losing out to all the women who were putting that attention onto themselves, who weren't taking care of the kids, weren't taking care of the house, weren't worried about a man's needs, who were hitting the gym, hitting the hairdresser, getting all the beauty treatments that they needed, shopping for new clothes every day, wearing their heels or whatever else is happening. Inside of your gray mouse, guys, half of the time, admittedly not all of the time, some women are not <clears throat> gifted or inclined that way, but half of the time there is a bombshell inside of your gray mouse value that gray mouse now i'm not telling you not to pursue attractiveness and this is the part where i want to talk to your girls as well men may tell you that you know they will be driven by your good heart they will be driven by your wonderful personality by all the interests that you share the primary driving force for a man to put effort into a relationship is a sexual attraction for you within a relationship before a relationship maybe later when you're retiring it will be different but generally speaking the primary thing that will make him put it any kind of effort for you is his attraction to you if he doesn't feel that attraction you are an accessory in his life you are useful in his life he may want to keep you in his life but it's not going to be an equal dynamic it's not going to be a fair relationship you must not delude yourself about this yes he will tell you that he wants you to do the lion's share of the housework that he wants you to bring in more money that he really values your good personality he doesn't if he is not attracted to you and he never will don't believe his word just take it from me and just take it as a fact 
And here's the part where I want to go back to speaking to men who are a little bit uh, more clever, a little bit more resourceful, to men who understood that a man's sexuality cannot rival a woman's sexuality in terms of its acquisitive power, uh, but understood that a man's resources can understood that if a man is very rich, if a man is extremely intelligent, if a man is willing to really put out and respectfully pursue a woman, that woman can fall in love with his resources, with her respectful, consistent uh, pursuit of her, with his intelligence, with his resources. But don't delude yourself either, guys. She needs to be attracted to you. She's not going to want to have you in her bed just because you're offering her resources, she's going to want to partake in your lifestyle, but she's not actually turned on by you. She is pretending. She is being a true partner to the gardener while taking advantage of your resources. So don't delude yourself about that either. That doesn't need to be the main component. And for a man, it simply isn't the main component. That is not the main thing that a woman will be looking for in a man. A man. Uh, a more experienced woman anyway, we're not talking about a high school girl, but it's not enough in itself, not for a romantic relationship, she's going to um, not be emotionally present for you, she's going to not value you, she's not going to be able to respect you if she also doesn't feel some minimal degree of sexual attraction for you that must be there you don't need to take care of yourself to the extent to which you need her to take care of herself she needs to be the more narcissistic the more receiving the more absorbing element in the relationship but you also do need to take care of yourself and you need to teach yourself to recognize modesty as a virtue not just with your lips but with your mind, with your heart, and with your other parts as well. Modesty to the world doesn't mean modesty to you. Modesty to the world can mean that certain parts of her are exclusive to you. And she can still be very passionate, and she can still be crazy attractive, and she can still be the kind of woman that most guys would do tricks to have in their life. Learn to recognize that. Watch less porn. All right, ciao, my loves. I wish you all a beautiful day, and I'll be talking to you soon. Bye.